Hey everybody. All right, we are on uh, the Green Hornet. We got the whole family back here. Well, family minus minus uh, a couple kids, but we got Hutch. And we're gonna head down to uh, Hutch's back. Hutch's back. And we're gonna head down to uh, Austin to go to the Formula One race. We're here in Mesa at flight. Only because Hutch was too lazy to drive. <laughs> so I had to pick him up here in Mesa. No, I'm kidding. I got my <laughs> private chauffeur. That's right. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna head over to uh, Austin and uh, yeah, we'll do some talking. We'll do some talking about hiring, you know, update mm -hmm. you guys on hiring, what's going on with the airlines and uh, just basically show you guys a nice ride over to Austin. So let's go. Get it done, never going back. Going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Get it done, never going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. All right, guys, we're here. We're up, we're running. Just finished our run up, called ground, and then uh, we're gonna head out. And uh, head to Pecos, two hours, 25 minutes. You ready for that? Sounds good, man. Right, Let's man. do it. Let's do it. Hey, ground, uh, Sirius 5-1 Foxtrot Mike at F Flight North Taxi. We have information Whiskey will going to be a eastbound departure. Sirius 1 Foxtrot Mike, runway 4 left taxi via Echo. 4 left via Echo, 1 Foxtrot Mike. Falcon Terra, Sirius 5-1 Foxtrot Mike, uh, ready for takeoff, 4 left Echo 1 will be a uh, eastbound departure. 1 Foxtrot Mike, fly straight out, runway 4 left, for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 4 left, straight out, 1 Foxtrot Mike. As a 2285, contact tower 1 4.6. Bleeds off, take us. Okay. As a 2880, concern base your discretion, number 2, full traffic on Mount Bonner, runway 4 left, go touch go. All right, everybody, watch the show, watch the magic happen. All right, here we go. Number 3, full Archer, 1 mile down ahead, runway 4 left, go touch and go. All right, Archer, 1 mile ahead, 4 left, clear, touch and go, 6 times Juliet. Power looks good. Oh, hey. <laughs> after 98416, turn left cross under your discussion. Roger, after 98416, okay, we're just giving them a little bit more space. Roger. And after 98416, turn You can be the FO again and like control the weather, the temperature. Sounds good. I'm not sure, but I think that's Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, I can hear you. So Hutch is the FO again. And Amanto. And, uh, so if the temperature's bad, you just smack him on the head. <laughs> temperature boy. <laughs> into the oh, kitchen. reading. We have learning Mother going on back there. The yes. Washed. <laughs> we should talk about hiring. Let's give should the be. let's give the people some. <laughs> we got to give the people the update, man. I got to think about what I can and can't say. That's true. So Hutch is now part of the inner circle. Like, you know, I'm in hiring. He's part of the inner circle in hiring. So. He's got some top secret stuff that he can't talk about, but uh, we're going to give the people what we can't talk about, right? Yes. I can 639, contact up three center one six point two two. We just we started hiring. Uh, hiring's going uh, pretty good, I think. Um, you know, all the airlines are hiring. I just had a friend uh, hired at United. So uh, yeah, I think looking forward, um, you know, th things are really competitive right now. So I think looking forward, I'm guessing that you know the competitive times are going to go down because there's only such a big pool that we're fish we're all fishing from, right? Absolutely. It seems like it's a it's a race to see who can hire the most qualified candidates the fastest. And so uh, my perception is that all the airlines are just trying to hire as many people as they can as quickly as they can and find the best candidates out there. So. Get your apps updated and get your apps in. Make sure you choose wisely. <laughs> so we're recruiters, so we obviously want you to come to Southwest. Yes. So, but uh, anyways, let's let's talk about, okay, just graduated from uh, one of these schools, you're flight instructing. What are some of the things that they should be thinking about earlier on that's going to help them down the road? We did talk about, I think, in a past video about making sure your logbooks are tight and neat. That's probably that indie video we talked about that with yep. Kelly. But uh, you know, early on, you're just starting your your flying career. Maybe you're you're progressing from flight instructing to uh, your regional airline or corporate or whatever you're going to do. What are some of the things that you know they need to be thinking about that will help them out down the road? Yeah. So uh, just to kind of touch on the logbooks again, real quick. Um, just keeping your logbooks neat and maintained and um, 
as detailed as possible so that when you look back on your flying career and uh, history, uh, you have all your times in order, but also maybe some notes or even stories so that when you're thinking back about uh, mistakes you've made, lessons learned, uh, how you grew and developed as a pilot, uh, you have that information available to you so that you can reference back to that uh, as you're preparing for your interview. That's a really, really good point. Um, you know, especially if you had any kind of emergencies or anything kind of out of the ordinary. Uh, those are things that you want to break up, bring up in the interview. So if you put that down in your logbook, just in the, the remarks section, um, just a little bit about it, maybe that'll help jog your memory to give a good hey, tell me about a time you had an emergency in the airplane and what was it. You can retell the, the story with detail and vividness. It, it give that, that detailed story rather than, you know, kind of going, which we've had, ah, uh, you know, I don't remember, you know, kind of where we we're going or I don't remember, I just remember the emergency. Um, the more detail you can have in your stories, the absolute better. Yeah, it makes the, the story a little more realistic. And it also brings the listener, which is us as the interviewers, into the story to where we can relate a little bit better. So if you can, you know, give uh, specific details of uh, whether you were left seat or right seat, whether you were going through a training program or, um, like, you don't have to know what day of the month it was. That's irrelevant. But, you know, just things that uh, lend a little more credibility and uh, reality to the story. It, it just helps a lot. And uh, one thing I'll just mention is, is, is it's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> we all make mistakes. Yes. That's part of flying. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. And it's what you do with those mistakes and how you recover from those mistakes that uh, really say a lot about your character and who you are. So um, we really like hearing stories about, you know, emergencies or mistakes that you've made in an airplane. Because um, we've all made them. Absolutely. Yep. Every Anything you've done, somebody else has already done before you, and somebody's going to do it again. So uh, we like to hear that you take ownership of, oh, my gosh, you'll never guess what I did. I did the craziest, dumbest thing one day, and here's what I learned from it. And now I don't do that again because I learned my lesson. So that's just really important. Uh, it shows humility, and it just shows your character. So that's why we ask you to be honest with us in the interview. Tell us your story. And... Uh, yeah, just take ownership of, uh, of your past. And I think an, another thing, too, which with going on and being honest about it, um, in, your, in your application, you know, regardless of what airline, you know, just speaking for our airline, if you don't know the answer to a question or you have some confusion, make sure you reach out to the pilot hiring team. Um, all the airlines have an email that you can get your answers uh, to some of the questions that you have, we do. One Fox Trout Mike, Roger. Uh, we're going to say hi to our, uh, our Tucson boys. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yeah, so there, there, make sure you get the answers from the airline. Don't rely on your friends. Don't rely on, I heard it from a Czech airman. Email the hiring team. Get it cleared up. That's the only way you're going to find out what the real answer is. Not that you know your friends or the Czech Airmen are trying to mislead you on purpose. They just may not know. Uh, something may have changed. So um, it's critically important to answer those questions as accurate as possible because if you get into the interview and that question was answered, a, a question was answered incorrectly, uh, that's just a road that you don't want to go down because now your credibility is called into question. Um, it's just a bad scene. You don't want to do, do that. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I'll say about that. Yeah, I would echo that. I'm, I'm sure it's all the, the same for all the airlines, but uh, I can tell you for sure that at Southwest, if integrity is ever in question, it just that's just an automatic no. So yeah. uh, we really, really focus on that. So... Rather, you just tell the truth and own up to uh, your past, and uh, you'd be surprised at what we are okay with in somebody's history, as long as you're honest about it, and you take ownership of it, and you learn from it, and you're humble. Yep. That, that's all we're asking for, is that you're honest about it. So Yeah, and, and getting back to, you know, like, what can, what can some of these guys and gals do right now that will help them? 
is, you know, if you're going through training, try to have a clean record. But if you have busts in your record, that's okay. Try to create distance from when you had a failure to what you're doing now. Um, and you should be constantly striving for that. Uh, I bring that up because there's some, sometimes we have some issues with whether or not there was a check ride failure or not. And then when you get into the interview and you're trying to explain that, um, you should have all that wire tight before you come to the interview. So again, having a check ride failure, having a couple check ride failures are okay. Um, just own up to it, like Hutch said. Um, learn from it, move on. Um, but be honest about it, list it on there. Um, it, it's a good topic for discussion in the interview. So, Absolutely. So other things that uh, you can do, um, obviously, keep flying. I know that sounds ridiculous to say, but keep <laughs> flying. You'd be surprised at how many people we see that uh, haven't flown very much in the last uh, few years. And we do take into account that uh, during the last 18 months with COVID, uh, there has been a lot of uh, pullback and decrease in flying. So we take that into account. But uh, we do like to see that people are trying to stay in the cockpit and keep flying. So uh, if you have the opportunity to, to upgrade or become a Czech airman or an evaluator, if you're a military guy, um, any sense of uh, or any type of progression uh, or growth in your flying shows that leadership aspect. So um, those are other things that uh, we always highly recommend as well. Additional type ratings never hurt. Um, so depending on how you're getting those type ratings, um, don't always want you to just get new type ratings and sit in the right seat because it'd be great to move to the left seat and build some PIC as well. So uh, if you have the chance to upgrade, Maybe it's uh, best to just stay in the last seat and build that PIC, but um, one thing we'll also say is it never hurts to have a 737 type rating if you want to come to Southwest. That's true. That is very true. So, not required. Not required, but yes. it definitely does not hurt. <laughs> hey, uh, one uh, question that I have received in the comment section below on some of, the, our, uh, some of our discussions on this topic is the topic of making that military transition to the airlines. What are some of the things that our, our uh, military brothers and sisters could be doing to prepare for that transition? Maybe you know they're up on their service commitment, they're getting out, or maybe they're up on retirement, they're get, preparing to leave the military. Uh, what are some of the steps they should be taking to uh, prepare for a life, you know, not just with our airline, but any airline, getting ready to apply to the airlines. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a really good question. And uh, there, there's probably several things that I could say towards that. Uh, I think a lot of military guys, based on uh, their flying history, uh, they've flown around the world. They have some of the best training in the world, and they have a ton of flying experience. And so a lot of times they get into this rut, I think, that they should go, their only option is to go directly to a major airline. And while that is the optimal situation, uh, sometimes going to uh, either a regional airline uh, for a while or maybe even a corporate job is just as valuable as long as you, it gives you the opportunity to just keep flying. So if you have your apps out everywhere and you don't get picked up at a major right away, don't be afraid to go to any one of the regional airlines and get started. Get your foot in the door. You can learn the 121 operation, build valuable experience. Uh, you will learn a ton when you transition from that military flying to that 121 world. So I always encourage guys to have their applications out everywhere. And when a job is offered, take it and run with it and make the best of it. You can learn so much. And all that's going to do is better prepare you for maybe getting to a different airline, whether that's a major at some point, uh, and the you know, whole interview process as well. So um, that's, that's probably one of the things that I would highly emphasize. And especially important for guys that are flying, uh, maybe they're taking a, a Predator tour, uh, they're flying, uh, you know, the uh, unmanned predators or drones. Uh, or if you get a staff tour, you know, typically if you're getting ready to retire, you know, it's it's very common on active duty, you, you're going to be pulling a staff tour. Um, and that's going to take you out of flying for, you know, three to four years. 
You may have to, uh, like Hutch said, uh, you know, go get some of the 121 experience at a regional uh, if you could go there or a, a corporate job. Um, the thing is, is do not be above taking a flying job, no matter what it is. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter if you flew uh, Raptors in the Air Force. Uh, you should never have the mentality that I am above going to get flying job A. Exactly. Um, because that's the wrong attitude to have going to the airlines, yeah. um, I, I would say. I but agree. And I would say that we see a lot of candidates at applications where they have not flown for the last two or three or four years in some cases, or their the amount of flying has been almost zero. And uh, I can speak for our airline, but I know all the airlines, they don't like to see that yeah. uh, because it, it brings into question your, your motivation to fly. And, and let me clarify one thing. Uh, we don't just mean getting in a, a light piston <laughs> That's a, true. airplane. We, we are still looking for people that are flying a, a turbine aircraft um, yeah. as, far as, as far as that recency. So yeah. we do encourage uh, some type of turbine aircraft, corporate, regional, doesn't matter. Just keep flying. Go get that job. And uh, just... That, that just shows that you're genuinely sincere about flying an airplane. Yes, uh, I would agree. Uh, one other thing I would recommend also is making sure you get your logbook squared away. Uh, the, for some reason, the Navy and the Marine Corps guys have it locked. Um, they have good products that they produce uh, when they bring them to the interview. Um, you know, us being Air Force... Uh, we have, is it the harms office? I think it's, it's the, the harms, harms office. office yep. and there's a SARM that works in the harms office. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but anyways, go to your records keeper, whatever that is. Uh, make sure you grab your records and reproduce a product. Uh, in the Air Force, it's, it's a little easy. You have that two sheet of paper. But I would break it out into an Excel spreadsheet. Um, again, the Navy guys have really good products that they bring in, and it makes their logbook interviews go so easy, so sweet. So uh, I'd encourage working, putting some effort into that um, prior to getting out and uh, getting all your records, getting all your numbers for your different locations that you've been at, different bases that you've been at, and not necessarily the commander's phone number to that desk the commander had left like, you know, 18 years ago. So find somebody that you've flown with at some of the different assignments. I think that's one of the big ones with yeah. the military guys and gals is having a a uh, your pre sheets filled out with somebody that, you know, with me that when I do reference checks can pick up the phone call and actually get to somebody who's flown with Hutch, maybe in Korea or wherever they were based and can speak uh, to, to that. So... Uh, because a lot of times we'll get a phone number to somebody who, you know, this is the third commander now and has no idea who Hutch is. So that's another thing. So keep good records with that. Keep following up on that. Jot it down. Put it in your calendar or whatever. Have have some records for some people that you can refer back to when you, we do your background check. Now what else does a military guy need to do? Get the records really good as far as uh, flight time, get your past, previous history uh, records done. Um, make sure you list make sure you list all your awards. You know, if you've got um, especially air medals, um, put that down on there. You know, it's, it's, it's something, it's a good conversation piece. The other thing that we see a lot of is um, there's some there's some confusion about chief pilot or assistant chief pilot. So, when that question is being asked on pilot credentials, we're talking about civilian chief pilot, civilian assistant chief pilot, not the title of chief pilot that some military squadrons are giving uh, an individual in the squadron to hold. I know that different squadrons have different roles for what they call a chief pilot, but that's not what we're really looking for. The chief pilot and assistant chief pilot and the, mil and the civilian role is really the equivalent to a commander or a DO or an XO, uh, if we're talking about Navy, where you have uh, the authority to discipline, uh, to counsel pilots, uh, those types of things. So 
Uh, don't don't confuse a military chief pilot with being a civilian chief pilot. So the answer on that question, if you're a chief pilot in the military, is no. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Once again, we know you're trying, but yeah. that's not what we're looking for. So just be honest on that, and uh, and and mark that appropriately. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I think we're gonna kick back and listen to some XM radio chill. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll turn on the radio, or we'll turn on the videos when we get uh, a little bit closer to Pecos. But because uh, I only, honestly, only have uh, another three batteries, and I've got three cameras, so I don't want to use them all. <laughs> but I hope you guys are finding value out of this. We'll uh, we'll talk to you guys here here in uh, oh, about two hours. Sounds good. <laughs> get your apps in. Hurry, come see us. It's spread out. All right, guys. Well, we're in Dallas, home of my lovely airline. But uh, through a series of unfortunate events, <laughs> well, we had to drop off Hutch here. And we didn't, uh, we actually did not get to film yesterday leaving Austin because, man, leaving the Formula One race, we were 36 in line. And it was really busy, it was night, a uh, little bit of weather, just low low uh actually it wasn't even low cloud ceilings it was just super busy so again safety first we put away the uh all the cameras and we just focused on the task at hand we were able to get out probably about an hour and 20 minutes from actually starting up and uh it was it was kind of a mess but the controllers hey hats off to the controllers there not only on the ground ground controller was awesome there in austin um, tower they sequenced everybody out in a really efficient manner it was the largest attendance there at the formula one race there in austin uh in history so tons of private jets i think you guys saw that on the uh on some of the filming but um those guys hats off to them they did they did a great job managed a lot of uh tempers that were uh, flaring in some of the airplanes so good job um also hats off to dallas that's off to the Dallas controllers and approach control. You know, they they uh, they weren't gonna let me in. I think they felt pity on me and uh, they let us in you know, because we we're gonna, uh, my wife was gonna fly, my wife and kid were gonna fly on the flight out of here. Um, unfortunately, it got canceled. So uh, good for us. We get to fly the uh, Green Hornet together. I don't get to fly home by myself. So, all right, let's get going. All right, we are clear to land, runway 2-1. Plane 251, do you have the uh, arriving Pilatus short final on site? Plane 251, that's affirmative. Plane 251, Roger, just uh, behind the Pilatus, no delay across the runway. Behind the Pilatus, no delay. Plane 251 will go. 500. Excellent, there's 605, that traffic's off your left wing now, about two miles westbound south altitude, still indicates 5,000. Got him inside for Excellent, it's fine. Pilatus 45, X-ray, stay parking. A1. Pilatus 45, X-ray, turn right next to X-ray, contact ground point 6, good day. Ground point 6 at Alpha 10, 1, 2, 4, 5, X-ray. Exo Jet 605, can we do a right 360 here? Exo Jet 605, traffic's no factor. You can descend and uh, enter the right downwind if you need to lose some altitude. Okay, we'll uh, turn the right downwind for Exo Jet 605. Much better. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> yep. Plane 251, no traffic. Good day. Plane 251, good day. Appreciate the help. All right. A little bit of a bouncer. But we're here. We didn't have to go around again. Sierra's one Fox Red Mike, stay parking. We're going to a Sierra Charlie hangar. Sierra's one Fox Red Mike, turn right back, taxiway, taxi to Sierra Charlie via Alpha, monitor ground point six, and I appreciate the help. That aircraft was unfamiliar. Yeah, no worries. Uh, we'll taxi to park monitor ground, so, uh, Sierra's one Fox Red Mike. All right, guys. Bravo well, thanks for joining Kilo. us. That was the return trip Taxi's from Formula two, One. Scott, the ground Obviously, we had to. Uh, Bravo, Bravo 12, hold your own way. We definitely had to audible there because. Uh, Bravo, Bravo 12, hold your own way. Yeah. We needed, uh, we needed to flex because uh, of cancellations. So we did that, and we got home, right? That's what counts. We did. got home. We got home safely, and, uh, yeah, that's it. So hope you guys liked it. Uh, we will see you again next week on another video, and uh, this time it will be uh, in the 7-3.
because we are going back to work. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Take care.